All right, welcome back to another episode of Nostalgia Street, where we share the stories that shape us. Um, today, unfortunately, my business partner and friend, um, Vince, is not here. He has a combination of Ugandan syphilis and paralysis below the lips. I totally made that up because he's not here to defend himself. But our guest today is Tana. We will um, reveal Tana uh, and her last name and everything about her in a few. Uh, But we always have our obligatory question. And normally Vince is the one that's hot on the heels with uh, some crazy question. So now it's fallen on me today, Tana. So here's my question. If you could think of all of the different love stories, the movies that have been out there, if you could take the um, the hero from any love story movie and the heroine from any love story movie and have them fall in love with each other in a new movie, who would they be? Oh, gosh, that's a hard one. You know, The Notebook is like the OG love story. Sure. So I feel like... I would probably choose the guy from The Notebook, Ryan right. Gosling. Yep. And, oh gosh, I have to think of the movie. It's um, when the gal, she runs away. You're making this stuff up, are you? <laughs> I'm going to have to clip that. <laughs> no, no, we got to keep rolling here. Oh the gal that runs away. Um, so she runs away from her abusive husband, and um, she moves to this small town. Of yes. course, like like all Sandra of them. Bullock was sure. the <laughs> we'll, we'll pick her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So those two, I feel like, could be a good couple. All right, I like that. Yeah, that's Sandra Bullock. I can't remember the name of the movie, but I I think that's what happened. Yeah. In there. Okay. Well, we'll give you a pass. Do you remember? So the notebook. Do you remember what were the names of those main characters? It's such a popular movie, but I don't know the names of the of the characters. Is the girl's name Rachel? Well, that's the yeah. That's the. Or is that that's the, the waitress or the waitress? The, yeah, <laughs> the actress. We're Rachel, really good at these love stories. Yeah, she was in uh, Doctor Strange. I can't remember her last name. Yeah. Need a this is where we need the iPad out to give us. Yeah, no kidding. Everything. Oh well. Yeah. Nostalgia Street invites you on a retro ride that's more than just a trip down memory lane. Uncover life lessons and personal growth stories that stem from our collective past. So you can live a richer, more connected life today. Whether you're a 90s kid, an 80s teen, or simply young at heart, you'll find something to relate to in each episode. Now, here are your hosts, Vince and Jeff. All right, folks. Well, today our guest is uh, Tana Sukup of Strategy LLC. And we'll talk a lot more about that. We are... Uh, very good friends uh, with Tana Vince and I. Um, she actually does work with us. We do work with her. Uh, we feel like we're a pretty good team together. Oh yeah. And uh, and Tana helps us post a lot of our content, almost all of our content. Um, so this is the first time now that she gets to be uh, in front of the cameras. And uh, so yeah, it'd be fun to see where this goes. <laughs> I wish that my boy was here. I feel so, it feels so weird. It's like my right arm's not here, but we'll we'll yeah. get through this. Yeah. So Tana, where did you grow up? Yes, yeah, so I grew up in Leota, Minnesota. Very very small town, um, like a hundred people. You, Whoa. You drive through and you can kind of see the end of it right when you get into <laughs> into the town. But um, it's kind of cool. My family's been there for a long time. My grandpa. Um, actually still lives on the farm that he was born on oh wow yeah so lots of family back home there too that they all stayed but i'm the only one who escaped so you far escaped yeah so what's your family unit look like growing up yeah so i'm the oldest i have two brothers and a sister um, my sister's quite a bit younger than me she's 12 years younger than me okay Brothers are a little like bit. to get frisky later on in life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> well, that's a story we don't, for another yeah, day. Yeah, we don't see that. Uh, um, um, that no, age. but my brothers, I basically grew up with two brothers and kind of um, grew up on a farm. So we, uh, yeah, got into lots of trouble, ran wow. around barefoot, that's made perfect. teepees out of sticks sort of thing. What, but, yeah. uh, what kind of farm was it? Dairy farm. Dairy. Yeah. So when I was younger, my dad milked the cows and it was a lot more labor intensive and then when i was in high school he got a robotic dairy barn and so now robots milk the cows wow but that'd be expensive right (laughs) a little bit yes gosh i can't even imagine (laughs) so what's a robotic uh uh milk how does it work that look like yeah (laughs) yeah so um it's like a big square and in the front of it is some special like food that the cows really want kind of tastes like candy to them 
and You're so beating them, yeah, right? so they walk in there because of that. Um, and they learn later that they want to go in there. So as you train cows with the robots, they actually go in on their own because they want to. But okay. anyways, they go in and there's all these lasers that understand the measurements of the cow. Oh, wow. And so then it, it can identify what cow it is. Whoa. Yeah. So like there's a lot of training and work that happens up front when you convert to a robotic dairy barn. But anyways, once the cow's in there and the, labor, the lasers have read the cow, they know which one it is, an arm comes around and then connects to the cow and starts milking it while it's enjoying its yummy food. And then when it's done, it opens back up and then the cow walks out and that's it. So how? here's a quick stupid question. <laughs> Does every cow have the same amount of udders or do they have different number of udders? <laughs> yes, unless it has something wrong with it. So they all have the same? <laughs> they all have the same how number. Many, how many udders are Four. there? Four. Four, yeah. really? Yeah. Gosh, I could have sworn they had like six or eight. <laughs> so four, they always have four. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, I'll stop the questions right there. <laughs> it's a yeah. fascinating topic. I've never yeah. seen that happen. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's actually healthier for cows because then they can get milked multiple times a day rather than just twice if you're doing it man more manually. So huh. interesting. Yeah, it's actually healthier for them. So, um, so how many cows did you have on the farm? People ask time? me that all the time, and I have no idea. But it, it probably <laughs> well, you probably got used to the smell. Y yeah, right? I did. When I go back home now, though, I notice I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, it's this is a farm. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I forget about that. But um, it's so funny. My mom was always so paranoid that our house would smell like cows um, that she got these Bath and Body Works like wall plugins yeah. and would always buy the same scents. And she'd go so overboard with them that like in school, kids would be able to tell what sweatshirt was mine <laughs> because it smelled like caramel. <laughs> And they Instead still of, smell like that. I go back home and it still smells like really? caramel. Yes. They even discontinued the scent and it still smells like it. So it still smells like yeah. cow, you smell like caramel. That's yes. probably a good thing. Yeah, right? probably good. So um, what, the, what are the age differences in between you and your brothers? Yeah, so my brother Trey is two years younger than me. Okay. And then my brother Tucker is five years younger than me. And what's your sister's name? Taya. So Tana, Trey, Tucker, and Saya. Taya. Oh, Taya. Sorry. So it's all T's. All T's except for. Yes. Oh yeah, that's right. I, I'm, I've got Suk up in my yeah, in my yeah. head there. So Tana, Trey, Tucker, and Taya. Yeah. Very cool. So where did where did your parents come up with those names? Do you know? They started with Tana because they liked it, and Trey, and then Tucker came along and had to stay with the T's, and then Taya yeah. was like, well. I have to stay with the T's, so <laughs> they just kept going. <laughs> Tana sounds like a uh, like an, a warrior name. Oh, I, you know, it, some people think it's short for Montana, but oh. it, yeah, it there's really no reason for it. My mom just liked the name. <laughs> you could go with that, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was the first Hannah Montana, and then they we had some legal issues, so I had to change my name to Tana. So that, <laughs> yeah. that might work out. Um, so what did what did young Tana do on any given day on the farm? Yeah, so I really loved the animals, so I often was taking care of the calves and things like that. Um, did you name your cows? I would sometimes name, name like a favorite calf if I had one. But um, yeah, so, well, we had to do chores, so I had to feed the calves every, every day. Um, we had Shetland ponies for a little bit, and I... Those were kind of my responsibility too, but they were kind of mean. <laughs> <laughs> I got bit and kicked a few times. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But otherwise, no, I spend a lot of time playing in the grove. We yeah. called that like our forest. Okay. And uh, we would build forts out of sticks. Um, and there was, a creek, there was a creek that ran through it actually. And one time we got the great idea of damming up the creek so that we could get a, make a pool, yeah. like a swimming pool at home. <laughs> and... Uh, we did that. We played in it all day. And then later my dad re realized what we had done. Uh -oh. And he was like, you guys, that crick is protected by the DNR. And I can get in a lot of trouble uh -oh. for something like that. Dun, so dun, dun. We had to undo our, our dam there, but it, it was fun. Yeah. Dad and legal issues. I swear. <laughs> Why do those always have to come and play? So what yeah. were some of the favorite um, movies or songs that you enjoyed as a youngster? I remember as a kid, um, my dad really liked rock, so he listened to a lot of Guns N' Roses and yeah. things like that on the farm, and I remember he would work in the shop, and he'd have the doors open, and then um, his stereo system would be blaring this music across the yard, so wow. no matter where you're at, you could hear it, um, so I kind of, and then he also loved Garth Brooks, so that country music. Big difference there between Guns N' Roses <laughs> yeah. and Garth. Yeah, absolutely. Which do the cows like more? 
<laughs> they probably like something a little quieter, like Garth Brooks, rather than the rock music. I would say, but I'm, I'm uh, curious if that would affect the flavor of the milk. <laughs> flavor between. of the milk, no, but it actually they are more finicky than you would realize. So really? we know more about them than we did probably back then. But yeah. they probably didn't love the rock music all that much. Poor guys. But yeah. So yeah. how long? Um, so when a calf is born, how long before it can then start to produce milk? Um, that's a good question. I think maybe a little. I really just stuck to the baby calves. Um, when I got a certain age, my Tana's brothers totally making this stuff up today. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, when my brothers got a certain age, they said I don't belong helping on the farm. So when the cows got older, it's really when my dad and brothers would handle them. It's more when they were calves that I would do more with them. But I think it's about a year or two. You have okay. to breed them. You yeah. Know, and then they have a calf, and then. And then what do they milk. eat? Just hay or. It's a mixture of food. So they're okay. pretty particular about the food they eat. Um, every day, my dad would mix up their food in a giant mixer. Yeah. And he actually gets help by um, nutritionists to say, like, what percentage of each ingredient sure. he should mix up for his herd. And if that even gets messed up just a little bit, it can make the cows really sick. Wow. Um, something about they have multiple stomachs and then one can oh. twist. Really? Yeah. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, and it gets upset. So, Twisted tummy. Yeah. Yeah, it's huh. no good. So um, to avoid vet visits, we, um, dad off, he always took care of that piece yeah. of thing. So, so what would, what did life look like on the farm around the winter time? It was tough, um, especially when it was really cold out. It's yeah. a lot of extra work. Um, water can freeze over, pipes can freeze. We try not to have this happen, but like if a cow does have a calf in the winter, you have to get to that calf immediately. Sure. Um, so there's a lot of late nights for my dad or waking up in the middle of the night checking on calves and things like that. Sometimes when the calf was born in the winter and it was really cold, it was just a bad week. Um, the calf would just start out really weak. So that's often where I came in because we would put them in a calf hut with a heat lamp yeah. in there. But they often didn't want to eat right away because they just didn't feel good. And so I remember one night in particular, I felt so bad for this calf because he was born in the cold that I sat in that calf hut with him and just got him to drink little bits at a time till yeah. I finally got at least half a bottle in him. Um, my dad, he survived, which is surprising. My dad was like, you definitely saved that calf's life. So a little bit proud about, about being that. A vet? I have too soft a heart to be a vet. I, when I see an animal in pain, it just wrecks yeah, me. I, I can't do it. And so I really just don't think I was made for the farm. Probably another reason why my brothers were like, we will take care of this sort of thing. <laughs> Did you have any other farm animals besides cows? Um, we always had a dog. Yeah. Um, and, and there are often cats running around too. I never got super close to any of our cats, but I did, um, loved our farm dogs. We went what what kind of a then. dog would you have? We had a blue healer. Okay. We did a chocolate lab before, um, we kind of went through a lot of dogs. Were they herd or not? N no, we didn't really have a lot of pastures, so okay. there wasn't much need for a her herding, um, dog. So traditional, or not, I should say traditional, but, but the farms that grow, weed, corn, whatever. Isn't it true that those farmers kind of get a break uh, in the year? Um, for the farms that do like crops? Yeah. Kind like, of. Kind of right. But for your dad, he wouldn't get a break necessarily. Yeah. So he actually did that too. I should have mentioned that, but he did, did corn and soybeans too. Oh, wow. So yeah, he's very busy. He's busy. Yeah. What it helps that you, ha I have brothers to help run equipment. Yep. And then also my grandpa did for a long time. Okay. Um, and sometimes my uncles too would come back and, and come and help when, during busy season too. Yeah. So yeah, my mom would help. She would, we would run food out, you know, so they could just keep going. Also, when I was little, I was kind of a chatterbox. And so <laughs> my dad would, um, when he had a late night and had to get a field completed overnight, he would sometimes take me along because I would talk to him all night long. <laughs> I learned about banking and taxes and all kinds everything went at such a young age because wow. my dad um, took me along in the tractor and I just asked him all these crazy questions. Um, but it was fun. It was fun doing that. I would take my coloring books in there sometimes to keep me busy. <laughs> yeah. H hang out in the combine. That's it was hilarious. great. Yeah. I got a picture. You need some, you send some pictures of that. That'd yeah. be pretty cute. <laughs> so was your mom a good cook? Amazing cook. My grandma too. Both like, and the recipes have been passed down from generation to generation. But my mom was, an incredible cook, and I remember that she wanted to te wanted me to learn how to cook too. Yeah, um, and I would sometimes, but I didn't love it, and so I didn't really learn all of the recipes that my mom and my grandma had. But I do have a cookbook of them. Yeah, when I got married, they gave me one, so I have them nice. that I could use if I want to. Carry it on. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah. I don't know. I've, I, I, others we've talked with, it feels like that traditional farming setting uh, where dad's farming and mom's tending to the house and the kids and the cooking. And she's just like this amazing cook. And it usually is get, you know, gets passed down from her mom or yep. from, from the dad's mom. And uh, yeah, makes me want apple pie right now. Yeah. Really bad. She makes a really good apple crisp. Oh man, it's phenomenal. So, good. so would you do things with the milk? Uh, <laughs> or would it have to get sent off to somewhere to be yeah. pasteurized or whatever? Yeah, so it would be picked up by a milk truck regularly. And we didn't often use the milk in the house. My mom thought that was gross. Really? <laughs> I suppose. I guess when you know, I don't know. Maybe you know too much. You're like, eh, yeah. no, I'm not really into that. But um, there was one time we ran out of milk in the house and mom was cooking. I think it was like pancakes and needed yeah. some milk to fix. And she did send us out to the bulk tank where the milk is held. Yeah. And we got some, but that was for cooking. So that was okay. You All know, right. we weren't drinking it. You didn't drink it. <laughs> no, right. we didn't. I kind of, kind of curious what that would taste like if you would even know that. Like, I love heavy cream in my coffee. Okay. I don't like, I mean, half and half, I'll drink it. Yeah. But the the heavy cream with all that fat in there, it's just a really nice, thick yeah. mixture there. I'm kind of yeah. curious what that would taste like without it being manipulated by scientists yeah, or whatever. I don't know what it tastes like. I know what it looks, it even looks very different than really? milk that you see in a jug. Yeah, it's definitely thicker. I probably like that cream, but it's probably yeah. not as white as cream okay. cream is. But, and maybe without the sugar, that's maybe the best way to. So that you're telling us they whiten our milk? They might. I don't know exactly what they all do, but they might. Add a little it. white out or bleach or <laughs> yeah. something like that. Make it look like it tastes good. Yeah. So what, tell us about your school then. If you, if your town is of a hundred, I assume you, you went to a area where a bunch of schools kind of came there, but uh, it's probably still a small group of people. Yeah, I did a combination. So I went in elementary school. I went to the same school that my parents went to and grandparents went to. Oh, wow. Um, and I had one classmate. So, what? yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, from preschool all the way to eighth grade, I had one other classmate. Oh my gosh. And it was so funny. I remember when we were in like preschool or kindergarten. Well, we had the same teacher for both. Um, but she let us go to recess at noon because she we were halfway through the alphabet and it was only a quarter through the year. And yeah. so she was just like, just you guys can go play for a while. But I basically got tutored all the way yeah. through. But yeah. they did combined classes so they would put like third and fourth fifth and sixth seventh and eighth like together okay so then every other year i was with my brother in the okay. same classroom too but so the yeah. as you got older then the 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 potential for dating was it was a small pool of people, <laughs> it was right? a small pool <laughs> yes it was um so when i went to high school that's when i had that thing where there's multiple schools that came into one right. into one high school so the pool grew a little bit to well, a total of thirty kids. Oh yeah, so, 30, did you, well, thirty kids, but what, fifteen boys maybe? Yeah, yeah, yep. It was about fifty fifty. So Do you remember any yeah. any crushes that you had out of that fifteen to choose from? Or were there were there any? I actually now that I think about it, oh, I dated one who was in my class and then a guy a year younger than me, and then I also dated a guy older than me. So um, just kind of went to different. The classes. law of averages. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you gotta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. Probably like every. I mean, you think about these. You, oftentimes, you see like a really attractive, and it's either the guy or the girl that's like really attractive, and the other one's not. And then you find out they came from you know like a rural area, yeah. and maybe that's why. And if you didn't see that many of the other sex, then just about anything might be pretty good looking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's kind of hilarious. That's how it happened with me and my wife. I'm the ugly yeah. one and she's the good looking one. And <laughs> she just didn't have as many shoes. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up now. <laughs> we'll be right back. And so in the high school then, what? how many, you said you had 30 then in your class, mm -hmm. but then yep. was there like 30 in all the other classes? You had like 90 to 120 kids. Yep, exactly. So where was that school at? Edgerton, Minnesota. Edgerton, okay, I've heard yep. of that. Yep, and that's just a, it's a, it's bigger than Leota is for sure, okay. but still a small town. So when you were in high school then, what what were your thoughts about, I can't wait to get out of here and go to go to the big city, or what were your thoughts at yeah. that point in time? I couldn't wait to get out of there. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to learn and explore and try so many new things, and when you live in a small town, like for example, if you, I wanted to try dance when I was a kid. And in order for me to do dance, my mom would have had to drive me 45 minutes to an hour oh, each geez. way 
for every practice and every recital and all those things. And so it just really didn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. So I was excited for the opportunities um, after graduation. I forgot to ask you, I get a, we have to go back a little bit. You made reference something about your brother falling into or got in the middle of a manure pit. <laughs> what, yeah. What was that all about? Did <laughs> so you push brother, him or what? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> oh, no. My brother Tucker is such a sweetheart. Um, he He's awesome. But when he was little, he was a farm boy. Like he was on my dad's heels all the time. And he wanted to do everything my dad did. Okay. And sometimes he'd go rogue and do his own thing, but pretending to be dad. Yeah. And uh, one time he must have, I don't know why he did this. Nobody saw him do it, but he took a shovel. And so the top of a manure pit can get, it dries up, right? So yeah. like a little kid can walk across it. Yeah. So he did and he walked, he got to the middle. He must have got freaked out or started to sink. Yeah. Then he started to come back. And as he, he left the shovel there. Uh -oh. And as he came back, he sunk more and more and more and like, Obviously, thank goodness he made it to the edge, but uh -oh. he was covered in manure. <laughs> wow. Yes. So it's like a frozen lake, except yes. it's cow poop. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's like quicksand, I suppose, but really <laughs> gross quicksand. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. And, and then mom said, don't dare come in the house. Oh, We're going to spray you out. Yeah, we had to hose them off outside. And my dad didn't find out right away, but he drove by the manure pit like days later. I guess we hadn't told him that happened. And he saw the shovel in the middle, and he just couldn't figure out how that shovel got there. <laughs> <laughs> so he finally asked my mom, and we were like, that was Tucker. <laughs> um, yeah, He's underneath. Was... <laughs> He's underneath yeah. that shovel. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Poor Tucker. So did yeah. you other, did you, were there other, other little farm uh, accidents? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There, were, there were a number of farm accidents for a period of time, especially between my brothers and my dad. And for a period of time, I'm pretty sure they knew us first name basis at the at the ER because we had made so many trips there. Oh. Um, yeah, it got it was tough for my mom. I kind of feel bad for her because we had just broken bones and different things, stitches, really? just kind of for a period of time, one oh. after the other. So, yeah, there were definitely a lot of accidents. There's a story about me supposedly crashing a four wheeler, but I still think that it was my brother who did yeah. it, not me. But was they he? love to say that I did it, of but course. I think it was him. But there was one time I will admit to, we were driving kind of in a grassy area, high grass, because we did a lot of four, -wheel, four wheeling and my brother was behind me and there was the crick again, the crick was there, but you couldn't see it because of the grass because okay. it was so small at that place. And I hit the crick, like I went into the crick, nose dived, Tucker flew over my back oh, no. <laughs> and landed. And I remember telling him, I'm like, don't tell dad, don't tell dad. So. But we couldn't get the four wheeler out. Uh -oh. We couldn't pull it out of the creek. So my dad did have to come and pull it out. And he you knew should just go did. grab a cow, throw <laughs> yeah. a harness on that bad boy. There you go. And then use that, that stuff that lures them into the robotic milking. You know, I wish I'd thought of Man. that then, but I didn't. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought about that either. But yeah, I'd probably lay awake at night going, God, why didn't I do that? Why didn't I use that robotic milk yeah. mixer? <laughs> okay, so when you, uh, when you got to the point where you're like, okay, I'm ready to. Dust off these boots and head to the big city. What? Where did you yeah. end up going to college at? Yeah, Augustana. Augustana yep. here in Sioux Falls. Yep. I thought I wanted to be a teacher, elementary teacher then. So that's what I started with, yeah. elementary education and special education. Sweet. Yeah. I didn't know special education yeah. too. Oh, yeah, I cool. actually have my full minor in special education. Very cool. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. So are you Lutheran by trade? I'm There's Christian Reformed. Christian Reformed. Yeah. I don't know what that yeah. means, but I mean, but like Augustana, that's mostly Lutheran, right? It is. Or yep. founder there. Yep. But it is, I think it's one of the best schools. And I'm, I've said this before in here, but as a restaurant manager in my past, if if anybody had put Augustana on their application, then they were an immediate hire. Really? Because all, every applicant that we had at Granite City, the restaurant that I managed, if they're from Augustana, like their work ethic was just mm -hmm. at a different level. And I think yeah. maybe it's because of that rural setting, but um, <clears throat> yeah, they were not afraid to work. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. I mean, I think there's probably a couple of things that goes along with that. Um, you have to work pretty hard at Augustana. You know, the, yeah. the curriculum is pretty tough there. Um, but I've had that same experience with interns, that ones that come from Augustana are often really great. Yeah. yeah. So um, did you gain the freshman 15? I didn't, no. <laughs> didn't. I I was a huge runner. I loved to run. So I didn't really gain the freshman 15. Yeah. Did you run for school or just? 
Um, your own? I re- in high school, I did. I did track and cross country in high school. So I, it's kind of a funny story. I just like to run for fun when yeah. I was in high school. And one day I was running on the road and the cross country coach came up next to me, drove up next to me. I was running. He's like, you need to come to practice. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, recruit. I don't want people to watch me run. Like I just do this as a hobby. And he talked me into it. And this was my senior year. So I ended up getting one year of it. And it was, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I would have done it more years if I had known how much I loved it. Being Did on a you team. have any, any sweet accomplishments? you care to share with the audience? Um, I don't even remember. I mean, I have probably medals and ribbons at home, but yeah. I don't know of anything. Um, what was your furthest distance that you ran? So all the cross country, okay, there's two things. All the cross country races are the same. Okay. But um, I did half marathons in college, so that's probably the furthest I've gone is Sweet. a half marathon. Yeah. Sweet. Where was that at? I went out to the Black Hills okay. um, to do it. So it was, pre- it was pretty, at least yeah. while you're running, so you can look have something to look at while you're running. So yeah, it was pretty fun. Do you still run today? I don't. I, well, it's too cold right now. But. Yeah. I actually ran so much that I injured myself and I'm no longer uh, able to run. Which part did you injure? My knee. Yeah. 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 I could do everything else. So now when I need those endorphins, I just go really fast on the stair stepper. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Try to get a run in. But. Yeah. The knees and the hips yeah. usually take, they take their toll. They do. Do you ever watch, I hate to say this, this is so mean. I've probably said this before though. Do you ever watch people when they're running and you're like, oh, that's not, that's not the right form. You ever? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, especially when people swing back and forth. Yes. Only because it completely ruins your momentum when you're running. I think I've actually said that before on here, but I totally agree. Hey, at least they're out there because I'm not right now. I'm a fat slob these days. I got to get back out there. But yeah, it really does bother me when when people are trying to better themselves, but I don't know, there, there has to be some kind of an injury that's going to come out of that, that whole twisty thing. Yeah. You would think so. I mean, yeah. it's gotta be a joint too. You would think, yep. but yeah, oftentimes you'll see people, they, they're uh, probably running too hard. Mm. Uh, and you can usually tell, but you can kind of tell by the size of a person, whether they should be pushing themselves that hard or not. But I've seen some people that they're just like running way too fast. And yeah. Say, yeah. That's not gonna, yeah. That's not going to be sustainable, I don't think. Yeah. They'll probably just get tired and have to walk home. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Drink a big jug of milk. Maybe. <laughs> no way. You never know. That would be no good. Okay. So college, uh, uh, is that where you met your husband? No. Well, he didn't go to Augustina, but it's during that. It was right after college, actually, that I met oh, him. Oh, it was after college. Yeah. Okay. So we don't want to talk about any boyfriends at Augustina. Then. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had a couple, but... When I was in college, I so I started a women's clothing boutique about two years in. Wow! And that is with my mom, and that is actually why I switched to business and marketing from elementary education. Interesting. Yeah. So when I was in college, so that was uh, right after my sophomore year. So I had two years in, and then I really was focused on that and less yeah. focused on being a college kid. <laughs> which, you know, there's good and bad to that. Like yeah. there, there are times where I'm really I'm so grateful that I did it, but at the same time. I do wish I could go back sometimes and be more of a kid. So where did that idea for doing the boutique came from? Come from? Yeah. So my mom and I were um, shopping one day at some boutique shopping because we yeah. like to do that. And on the way home, we started talking like, if we had our own boutique, we would do this and then this and this. And that idea kept growing and growing. We kept talking about it. And then she, after that weekend, she kept calling me with ideas for a boutique. And before we knew it, we were... Um, buying clothes and we were gonna we started by selling out of her house yeah and then had an online store and that quickly grew and we really wanted a storefront pretty fast so so how did you get word out about your boutique a lot of social media marketing yeah and back then it was a lot easier for a business to do social media marketing than it is now yeah. um you could get all of those likes on an, on an organic post that you mm-hmm. can't really get anymore these days so how far out would people order uh, product and you ship it out to how far away? Yes, yeah, so we did the whole U.S. and we had some random ones, you know, from the coast here and there. But yeah. we probably sold more to people in the South and Midwest because that was huh. the, kind of the style that we had, so yeah. it fit. So you had a specific yeah. style. We did. Well, how would you explain that <laughs> style? Honestly, it's all my mom there. Like she's the stylish one. Even when I was in high school, like if I had an event, she would put my outfit together for me. Really? Yeah. So she's a stylish one. I just did the marketing. She did all like a lot of the buying, but she has a really cool style. I think her talent really is finding clothes that people feel really good in. Yeah. 
um, when it comes to the fit and the size and um, colors and patterns and things like that. She really has a talent for that. Sweet. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Well, so you're out of college. What's that look like? Yeah. So I um, graduated from college and that is when I decided with the boutique, I didn't want to stay with the boutique. Um, retail wasn't going to be my career necessarily. And so I just wanted to go and learn. I wasn't 100% sure on what it was, but I just wanted to learn from other people and see other things. And so I um, took a job in the digital marketing department at Sanford. And that was so fun because there are so many other marketers that were so experienced that I could learn from and work with. And yeah. So it was a really cool experience and that kind of started my marketing career. And then with the boutique, I still helped and consulted on the side. I did summer marketing nights and weekends and stuff. And then as she grew, she hired a marketer in-house and then I more just consulted and created marketing So she plans. kept the business going. She did. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, she so did. So this was a real business model. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she Ooh. had it for nine years. Wow. Yeah. So what happened when you left Sanford then? Yeah. <clears throat> then we're going to go into all my different experiences in marketing. We don't have to go There's all quite of a it. bit. Um, <clears throat> let's see. After Stanford, I did went to um, JDS Industries. Okay. And they're a wholesale company here in Sioux Falls. But the trophy they, makers? Yeah. But they do all personalized gifts now. They do a yeah. ton of different things. And they really hadn't been doing much at all for digital marketing. And so I was kind of the first hire for digital marketing in that company to kind of start moving things forward there because before that they were doing all catalogs that people oh, would pick yeah. from mm -hmm. the catalog for yeah. those old farts that I mean <laughs> to remember what a catalog is yep exactly so that was pretty cool um i learned a lot of things and got to meet a lot of people i got to go on their trade shows and stuff interesting <laughs> so eventually then let's just, we'll fast forward now so so now yeah. you own founder owner yeah. for a strategy yeah. spelled S-T-R-A-T-E-G-I-E. -E. Yes. Now, why did you do that? I just liked how it looked. It looked so unique. It was more than just strategy, the word. It made it more of like a brand or a business. And so, so gonna, really, it's just because I liked it. <laughs> you're going to have a kid, and it, the kid's name is going to be Michael, but you're going to yeah. be hoity-toity and say it's M-I-K-H-A. L L E. There is no way like my that. husband let me get by with something <laughs> like that. So that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> so, so talk about... Like obviously Vince and I, we we have our our business here. Talk about the, some of the challenges and the the fears, perhaps as you were thinking. Okay, I'm gonna, I I got this job here, but I'm I my heart is pulling me in this direction. What were some of the thoughts that were going through your mind as you decided it's maybe time to take the plunge? Um, I was scared, and I think the passion was so strong that it was it helped me to overcome that fear at the time. Um, and I'm lucky too. My husband was so supportive. He saw it in me before I saw it in myself. Yeah, that's cool. And and so I I had this idea. I just wanted to help more people. And I saw that so many business owners were just struggling to know what to do because, mm -hmm. in, as you know, in marketing, there's so many different things that you can do. Right. And that's actually where the name of the business came from: is strategy. It starts with creating a marketing strategy and then making sure that all of the pieces work together mm -hmm. toward your goals, your business goals. And so I had that passion and that idea and I just took baby steps. I was a little naive when I started and I'm yeah. kind of glad that I was because I think if I knew every single hurdle I would have to overcome in the beginning, <laughs> I probably yeah. wouldn't have chosen it. But yeah, it, it's been great and I have such great support from my husband and my family. And so that's kind of what helped me along the way. Yeah, in your space, there are so many people who I feel who, uh, hey, I have a computer and I dabble with Facebook. Therefore, I know everything there's to know about social media and marketing yeah. and I can take care of things. But you find out that's not the case pretty quickly. People don't know mm -hmm. that. But I think there are a lot of business owners out there who who feel like, hey, that's something I can just kind of take care of on my own. But when they do that, they're taking their eye off of the ball because they're trying to keep up with everything new, mm -hmm. but it can often lead them astray off of why they got into business in the first place. So if they're selling hockey sticks, as an example, and then they start to try to keep doing so much, eventually they're not going to be serving their customers that well and that's where somebody like you i think can kind of come in and give the strategy and and then do some of the things and kind of take the the load off of their plate 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm grateful that there are tools and that there are some things a business owner can do on their own in the beginning, because for some of them, that's just where you have to start. Yeah. But as they start to grow, you're absolutely right. They have to, it does make sense to start offloading that to an expert so that it can be done better. And I think too, some fall into the trap of some social media platforms make it look like it's really easy to do promotions and things like that. But it's really a shame that some things are hidden from them yeah. and to not know that they could be they could be doing a much better job at their marketing and they and so that's again where I'm able to help and and when there are times when they're not ready for me to help I'm there to educate them sure what are what are some of the challenges that you think that a lot of businesses mistakes that a lot of businesses make or they don't know they just assume cuz like for example you were talking earlier on back in your Sanford days I'm sure this is probably when this occurred where different platforms they were looking for people to join up so that they could have larger numbers. And it was much, much easier to market yourself as a business on a platform. Mm -hmm. And now, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but it feels like businesses are uh, taxed in a roundabout way. They've got to pay to play. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the past, Facebook would openly allow them the reach and, and yeah. whatnot. And now I don't know that platforms are allowing businesses to do that as much until they pay. Yep. Oh, that's absolutely true. I mean, they, the platforms are not as nice to the, not nearly as nice as they used to be to the business owners, but they're businesses themselves. And sure. they saw, they saw a space where they could make money. Yeah. And, and so, it, I mean, yeah, it's kind of a catch-22. There are times where I wish they'd be nicer or more helpful to business owners, and there are other times where I understand why they do that. But yeah, it definitely is not the same as what it used to be. No, no, no. not at all. So, I mean, I'm going to, this is a softball question for you, Tana. Here. Okay. Going to throw this up in the air, let you hit it as hard as you want to. <laughs> so, uh, do you think it's wise for businesses to try to keep up on all these platforms? Or is it better to hire somebody like you who can say, I got you covered? You know, I like to work with business owners who are ready for that. So they definitely have to be ready both financially and just ready to give it give it to somebody else and have that yeah. trust there. Um, so obviously they have to be at the, at the right place. And when they're not quite there, I usually, like I said before, I like to educate them on things that they can do themselves for now mm -hmm. so that hopefully someday when they are ready, they come to me and I can help them. But I also... To, I think it's really important to decide what platforms you're going to be on. Sure. I see some business owners sometimes thinking they have to be on certain platforms because solely because their competitors are. Mm -hmm. But they forget to ask the question, but are my customers there? Right. And yes. TikTok's a big one for that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so let's let's talk about TikTok. I mean, obviously, this is big in the news lately. I mean, it's is it owned by the Chinese or not? We don't know. Um, I think there's a presumption that it is, even though I think their owner says he's Singaporean and says <laughs> no. So now that leads the yeah. government then to wonder, should we ban this or not? So let's start with, do you think uh, that TikTok has an advantage for businesses or not? I think it does for certain businesses, not all. I think it can be a good educational platform in some industries, and I think it also can sometimes work well um, on the retail side mm -hmm. on for selling. There are TikTok shop, shops that do well. Yeah. For those that actually send products out to their customers. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's a few scammers out there. There are. And, and I myself don't purchase anything off of TikTok. Yeah. I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it's tough. I don't really don't push many of my clients to TikTok right now, partially because of you know, the controversy around the platform. Mm -hmm. So you could spend a lot of time um, building a following there. And, and what if it does get banned? Or sure. what is something, it, to me, it just is less stable than other platforms are. What do you think about privacy concerns? What do you recommend to people? Because uh, I swear to God, I can talk to my wife about a topic. Yeah. And then uh, the very next day, TikTok sends me uh, an ad or, or there's, there's not, it's not really an ad. It's just content around uh, robotic milking machines. Probably is probably what <laughs> yeah, I'm going right. to get if my phone is in this room. But it's crazy yeah, how, yeah. I mean, they, they, you know, you're supposed to have control over this so that the microphones aren't on and things like that. But yet they still are listening somehow, some way. I mean, they have to be. 
I, I have the same experience. I think everybody does. I mean, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I don't hate it yeah. <laughs> because I yeah. like it when yeah. my social media platforms show me ads um, of things that I'm needing at, at the time. So it, especially when it's on like Instagram or Facebook, then I'm, it's kind of cool. Or yeah. if I'm shopping for something, forget about it, get busy, and it retargets me, I'm like, yes, I did want to yeah. buy that. Thank you. <laughs> That's true. That's that is a positive. So I look at it that way. Um, but I think when you when you look at platforms like TikTok and things like that, there probably are some times where it's not safe or not a good thing for mm. that data to be um, shared with certain people. Yeah, because there's always bad players. But. Um, do you mind if I tell if I tell everybody our our age story? Um, this is my oh. favorite story. <laughs> um, we were, Vince and I were, um, we were just like inundated with just too much stuff going on with our business. And it was like, okay, it's probably time to engage with someone like Tana. And it cracked me up. I still, like I've got, I've got like little laughter tears in the corner of my eyes as I think about this. But Tana was just, I was impressed because I was, I've been in marketing for a long time. And <laughs> you said something and I was like, wow, like she's really smart. And then without even thinking, I'm like, how old are you? <laughs> and she told me. And, and then I, like, I think that night I'm like, that's probably a rude question to ask, but it was meant as a compliment because, oh man. Yeah. Okay. I'll stop. Yeah. I just thought uh, <clears throat> it was, it's just unique to come across individuals who impress you these days. Cause it feels like a lot of people just don't want to work. <laughs> I hate to say it like that. Like Vince, yeah. where's he at? <laughs> His paralysis or whatever. I don't, I don't know if I'm buying it. Whatever illness he has today. Yeah, whatever he is. Well, um, where do you see strategy in the next five or 10 years? Where do you yeah. want to take it? I really feel passionate about creating a business that is for people and mm. cares for people, mm. both employees and for the clients that we work with. Yeah. And so, it's my goal to grow maybe a small boutique marketing agency and in doing so it's all about the people yeah i want employees that love where they work and are treated well and compensated well and i want clients who trust us and walk away saying we had such a great experience with strategy and they really took good care of us and went above and beyond yeah. so i don't know how long that will take it's probably the road less traveled and yeah. one that will take a little bit longer but um that's what I'm going for. That's cool. Yeah. People need people need to be fairly compensated, but they need to enjoy their job. And I yeah. I hope and it feels like sometimes there's a little bit of conflict there. I mean, sometimes we put the money in front of the happiness. But the older you get, <clears throat> the more you realize I, I need to be happy with what I'm doing. Yeah. And you could be making major bucks, but if you're not happy with what you're doing, it's just a grind. Yeah, I mean, oh. think about how much time you spend at work every day. Right. Yeah, yeah. I see Vince more than I see my wife, <laughs> except for the weekends. So yeah, you gotta yeah. You gotta pick the people that you work with and yeah. pick the job and want to have fun with it. And I think that's something that I've loved so much about even this last year with strategy is getting to work with so many awesome business owners. Like mm -hmm. there are so many really good people, especially in our city and. Yep. I appreciate that about you guys, and that's why I enjoy working with Forefront so much is because the experience is so great. Yeah, we uh, we probably don't get as much work done when you come over <laughs> probably to, not. to chill with us, but <laughs> hey, it's a good time. It is. Okay, so I'm going to play Vince now. Okay. Um, I put on my Vince hat. So what is something that you have borrowed or that you still use from your earlier days as a human being to now, mm -hmm. something you pull from that helps kind of guide you and, and take you down the path of life? That's a really good question. I think that my parents and family instilled some really um, great morals and values, and they're very important to me, and they're still rooted very deeply within yeah. me. And I mean, one thing that comes to mind specifically is commitments. And maybe sometimes I go a little overboard with this, but if I say I'm going to do something, that's what I'm going to do. Yep. And so... Um, I think people appreciate that when you are um, you stick to your word and your commitments helps build trust. That's good. That's really good. Um, so, is there anything we didn't get to talk about in your childhood or upbringing that mm. you wanted to throw anything out there? Anything in my we... upbringing? Maybe I'll leave the audience with a funny story. Okay. Yes. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> so I 
and this kind of ties in actually to this came up again at my wedding. And the reason why now this story sticks in my mind is because I didn't realize the impact it made on others. So it's kind of funny, but also has a, a, a lesson too. But I, uh, when I played basketball, um, I probably was a junior, sophomore. And when the JV team runs out, runs out onto the court, all of the freshmen put their arms up and make a little tunnel for you to run through. Okay. And I'm small, a petite person, so I was point guard, of course. So I'm in the front and I'm running through the tunnel and I tripped over somebody's shoe. <laughs> <laughs> and I fell down, but I was oh, in the front no. and everybody else fell down too. Oh, me. Man. And at that point, I was like, well, what do I do? <laughs> so I got up, <laughs> waved at my parents in the stands and kept running and did like the layup thing uh. that we normally do. And everybody was laughing or whatever else. And I really didn't think about it again because to me, then it was like, okay, I'm the game. I got to pay attention to the game. Yeah. And never really thought about that again until I was at my wedding and um, my maid of honor, one of them, I had two of them, uh, told that story about me. But what she said was, you know, what I appreciate about Tana is that she always finds the positive in every situation. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good story. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was good. I, I thought about like smacking the microphone over to make you feel <laughs> yeah. good about that because yeah, we all make mistakes like that. Yeah. I remember it's, it was it's a little different, but I remember I was a very, very good speller mm. from the second grade on. And I remember there was a spelling bee where I was up against eighth graders or second grade, eighth graders. And of course, we had, we had age appropriate words, yeah. but I want to like a bicentennial uh, dollar for that. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, I just had, a, uh, I was just very competitive. Anytime there's a spelling bee, I would crush it. And I was in the eighth grade and it was a city or citywide, a school-wide spelling bee. And I'd already made bets with my buddies that I was gonna crush this. And I represented my class, all the kids did. There are like 15 of us. And they told us, you know, when we say the word, uh, repeat it, and then if you want us to tell you that word in a sentence for context, we can do that. Mm -hmm. And so I, every time I stepped up there, I was like, hold my beer, I got it. And so I heard the word. At what age? Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Shh, quiet, my mom's watching. Um, I heard the word, and I said, um, C-I-N-N-A-M-O-N, -N cinnamon. And like, that is incorrect. And I'm like, no, that is how you spell cinnamon in front of the entire <laughs> assembly. And then the, the teacher says the word was sentiment. And I went, I mean, I turned like 85 shades of gray <laughs> or red, not gray, yeah. wrong book. And uh, so then uh, a buddy of mine in my yearbook that year, he said something about uh he drew an arrow to what somebody else said. He said, my cinnamons exactly. <laughs> so that was a that was my embarrassing moment. For, there you uh, go. And I wasn't as gracious because I'm like, oh, no, that's <laughs> yeah. how you spell cinnamon. <laughs> Trust me. Jeez. Oh, well, anything else? I don't think so. We're going to have you back on, it. I'm sure. That we're going to yeah. find some other shenanigans that you did. All right. So I'm Vince. Uh, so until next time, stay curious, stay engaged, stay infected. I mean, engaged. And we'll see you next time on Nostalgia Street. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast platform. If you're on iTunes, please take a moment and leave us a rating and review. Head on over to our YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. You'll get access to engaging visuals that complement our podcast content. Thanks again for tuning in, and we look forward to having you with us on our next episode. So until next time, listeners, stay curious, stay engaged, and never stop walking down Nostalgia Street.